getting just half of my and my kids' appointments on a daily basis is no small feat. I need to use a calendar to stay on track. We compared Google Calendar with Cozy Family Calendar to find the best family calendar for us and for you. Calendar is one thing, but being Captain Mom or Dad means more than just keeping track of appointments on a day-to-day -day basis. I asked you what you thought were the most important areas to stay on top of that a virtual calendar could help us out with. Now, I had my areas in mind, but I was just curious to know. Yeah, we basically agreed that it was shopping list, to-do list, and a calendar. So that's going to be the focus of this video. Now, you probably have your own way of using a family calendar or to-do list, and we definitely do, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna try to focus more on the features of the Google Calendar Suite and the Cozy Family app, and not necessarily how we use them. I mean, to be honest, it probably will come up because we have a hard time not sharing when we think something we do is really awesome. But we're gonna try and stay on track here. If you'd like a video on how we use our calendar, then leave a comment and let us know. What we're looking at is how Google Calendar and Cozy Calendar helps your family stay organized by viewing the overview, the functionality, and the user-friendliness of the free version of the app. And we'll also include if there are any really awesome extra features. <laughs> First up is Calendar. Now, this is the main focus of both Google and Cozy, and they both do it quite well. Yeah, so the standard features that you have in both applications is creating events, of course, start and end time, setting all day events or setting recurrences, uh, selecting locations and calendar participants, and so on and so forth. When I create an event here on Cozy, then I have the ability of selecting several calendar participants under one event. Which Whereas, can be quite nice. Yeah, Google doesn't do that. You have to have an event and that's for one calendar. Yeah, and then you select who has access to those different calendars. Also, both apps have the ability to send you an email with your agenda at the beginning of the day. Some people might find that really helpful. One place where I like Google better is when you have to set reminders. So on Cozy, you can set one reminder in the free version. On Google, you can set as many reminders as you want. Yeah. And sometimes I need more than one reminder for the event. <laughs> like something pops up on my screen, like, oh yeah, that's right. And then a kid comes in and like has me thinking about something completely different. And then that one reminder is like out of my brain. Gone. Can you relate? Please, I'm not the only one, right? Another noteworthy difference is that in Google, you can create private events. So you can basically create the event like you usually would, but select it as a private event so that other people that usually have access to that given calendar won't be able to see it. Yeah, this comes really handy when it's time for like Christmas gift shopping, for example. And Marcus has his own calendar. He doesn't right now, but he will when he's older. And then we can put in our calendar Christmas gift shopping and make it private so you won't know. Yeah, just be aware though that if you have right access, if you can change or add events in that calendar, then you'll still obviously be able to see it. So uh, yeah, careful with those Christmas gift antics. In both Google and Cozy, you're able to print your calendar. So if you're going from analog to digital, that might be a really hard transition for some people, then you can print them out to begin with, put them in your fridge or in your command center, wherever you used to have it, and then get a overview whenever you walk past that place. Yeah, or if you have this like hybrid setup where you have a digital calendar, but you still wanna keep your analog command center, then this feature would be super helpful. Now, when it comes to the overview provided by the two applications, there is quite a notable difference. Google is a lot more flexible in terms of the type of overview and resolution that you can select. And we've gotten quite used to that. So in most cases, we'll use like the box overview where you have an overview of the entire week. You can see very clearly and visually when events start and when they end and which calendar they belong to. But Cozy, by contrast, only has the schedule overview where you see in a nutshell what's happening on a given day. You always have a very clear overview of what's coming up next, but you don't have that overview looking ahead a few days. Also, you're able to do the drag and drop with the box overview in Google. So you can move an event somewhere else or a reminder somewhere if you didn't have time, you were just then and there, or if the event got moved. You can't do that in Cozy. You have to go in, click, and change the date and everything. Now, this doesn't necessarily detract from Cozy because it is a matter of preference. And what Cozy does really well is presenting in a nutshell what's coming up next and what's happening during that given day, and also who is involved in the different events on your schedule for that day. Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to be reminded of how much you've got going on over the next week, or you get overwhelmed from your calendar looking like somebody threw a grenade into a paint store, then you're probably not gonna use the box feature in Google anyways. But if you are the kind of person who likes to have a visual reminder of how much you've got going on, how much time you're spending on any given task, and where things are on your schedule, then Google is better at that. 
When it comes to shopping, Cozy has a good shopping list feature in the app, which is really nice. There on the mobile, you have to go to lists and then to shopping, and then it's right there. You can add items. It's not a smart list and it doesn't sort your items, but you can create categories yourself and put your items underneath those categories from home. Now, it's really straightforward, and I think it's an important point that you mentioned that it is incorporated in the app itself. It's easy to use, and so if you basically have Cozy, you pick it up and, and you know exactly what you have. Google Calendar. It's just a lot more complicated when it comes to shopping lists and lists in general. First of all, you don't have a shopping list that's incorporated into Google Calendar itself, but the Google Suite has a shopping list that can be really nice to use. The thing is, it's not as intuitive as Cozy's shopping list, and it can be kind of hard to find on a mobile device, which presumably you'd be using when you go to the grocery store and need to use your shopping list. But once you figure out how to navigate it, then, you know, it works. And it works really nicely. I mean, that one you can decide if you want to have it be a smart list where it sorts into categories for you, or if you just want a list where you put items on it. But the good thing about Google though, is that it takes an item and puts it at the bottom of your list or removes it when you've done checking it off at the store. Cozy doesn't do that. You can pay for that feature as part of the premium version of the app, but it just seems like, oh, that should be, that should be there. Yeah. That said, none of these are deal breakers. I think the main reason that we're partial to the Google shopping list is because it's integrated with the Google suite of devices. And we have a couple of Google home devices in our home, which basically means that we can add items to our shopping list just using voice command. Yeah, when we were trying out Cozy Calendar for a few weeks here at our home, I found that being the most annoying thing about it. Because whenever I thought of an item that I needed at the store, I'd have to find my phone, open it up, tap in the code, and then open up the app and type in what I needed. Whereas usually I just say, hey Google, add eggs to shopping list. Okay, I added eggs. See? Now if you live in the US and you use Alexa, then Cozy has a similar integration there. So that might sway you the other way. But again, this is a nice to have and maybe not a need to have if you're not using a, a set of smart devices in your home already. If you're just looking for a nice shopping list that's easy to use, then Cozy does the job very well. Neither Cozy or Google shopping lists are as cool as some of the shopping list features that you find on meal planning apps. Now we did a video about that a couple of months ago. Find a link up here. They are amazing, like they have features like online shopping and linking to your pantry. Cozy definitely comes closest here with this little recipe feature. We'll talk more about that when we talk about extra bonus features later on. But taking a step back and just looking at the shared features of both shopping lists, both within Google and Cozy, uh, speaking of sharing, you can actually share the shopping list and, and the idea is that you share it with other members of the household so they can add items or look it up when they're at the store. In terms of other features, you basically have what you would expect from a shopping list. You can move things around, you can delete, you can bulk delete. It's all pretty standard run of the mill within both apps. The main difference is that in Cozy, it's all incorporated within the same Cozy family app. Whereas in Google, you kind of have to learn how to navigate it before you get comfortable using it. Next up is the to-do list. And within Cozy, again, things are just very straightforward. You've got integrated within the app a to-do list and all of the features you would expect a to-do list to have. You can add items, you can check them off, you can create headings, you can move things around and delete items. And that's pretty much it. What you see is what you get. Yeah, you have shared to-do list and you can have your own to-do list. You can even add to each other's personal to-do list as well. And if you add a date to an item on your to-do list, then it'll show up in your calendar on that date. Yeah, so that's a nice little added feature. And again, if you wanna keep at least one foot in the analog world, then you can print out your to-do list and have it out and about while you're going about your day-to-day -day tasks. With Google, again, it's not as simple. Here you have two options. You have Google Tasks and Google Keep. They're both integrated in the calendar on the PC, but if you wanna have them on your cell phone, then they're different apps. Google Tasks is a to-do list app where you can add dates and times and then it'll show up in your calendar. Where Google Keep is more of a general note-keeping app with to-do list as well. Yeah, but you can also have like handwritten notes, voice memos, pictures, quotes, drawings, what have you. Which is really cool. Which is quite cool. I really like that. And again, the functionality of both Google Tasks and Google Keep when it comes to the checklist or the to-do list is quite similar to what is in Cozy and also the shopping list that we already talked about 
in both Google and Cozy. You can add items, you can move them around, you can delete them, you can check them off, basically as you'd expect. One thing to note is that within Google Keep, the indentation option is quite intuitive and can come in quite handy if you want to create groups of tasks. Now it's worth noting that if you choose to go with Google Keep as your to-do list app, then in addition to all of the features that you would expect to have in such an app, then you have a lot of features that you wouldn't necessarily expect to have including a time-based and a location-based reminder system. Yeah, we mentioned voice memos, pictures, lists, and all these you can actually share with other people via any online app or even texting. Yeah, and you don't even have to have Google Keep to be the recipient of those notes, which is nice. Now, Cozy can email your to-do list to other people, but it comes kind of squished and not in a checklist format, so it doesn't really give you that easy overview and it's not very user-friendly. Now, what we didn't mention earlier is that you can obviously use Google Keep as your shopping list app as well. It has predictive functionalities as you're adding to your list, and as of a few months ago, it can link up to your Google Home as well. And how awesome is it that with the location reminder that Google Keep has, you can have your shopping list pop up as you enter the grocery store. These are the main areas that we wanted to focus on in this review of the Google Calendar Suite and the Cozy Family app. But we also wanted to highlight some of the notable additional features that maybe don't fall within those three areas that we already went through. We mentioned earlier how Cozy has its recipe function. It comes with a few pre-installed recipes, but you can also add your own from a URL or just from your own recipes which comes in really handy if your kids don't eat just anything. <laughs> you can also add any of your recipes directly to your shopping list. That's pretty cool. And then your calendar, instead of an event, you can add a meal, and then that meal will show up in the beginning of the day. So like dinner, spaghetti. Again, nothing fancy, but it does give you that little bit of extra overview that you might be looking for if you're looking to use a digital family calendar. Now, we mentioned that Google Keep has the ability to add pictures and notes in general, now, Cozy has the same option, only here it's its own little thing called journaling. Here you can add like a picture and write what happened that day, and then as you have a lot of those, you can send them out as like a weekly newsletter to your family with pictures of things that you've been doing with the kids. Grandparents would like that. In terms of the general feel of the two different applications, or three or four if you count uh, Google ones as separate ones. The Google Suite does have a very polished feel once you figure out how to navigate your way around the different applications. And of course, all of it's free. By contrast, the free version of Cozy, while it does everything you would expect it to do in a very straightforward way, it doesn't have the nice polished feel that Google does. And with the addition of ads, they can become quite invasive while you're especially learning how to use the application. That said, I really enjoyed how all the different features were just in one app, like one click and you're within all of them. And that brings us to our takeaway from this whole comparison. In a nutshell, the Cozy Family Calendar is a great way for making the transition from using an analog calendar to using a digital family calendar. It's super simple to use. It's very straightforward. It's all wrapped up in a nice single package that you just open up and it's all there. And it doesn't, apart from the ads, make it overly difficult for you to learn how to use those features. By contrast, the Google Calendar and Planning Suite allows you to do so much more. It is a lot more powerful, but it also has a much steeper learning curve. The fact that we've been using Google Calendar for a while and we've only recently started picking up on Google Keep and Google Tasks and kind of implementing that into our day-to-day -day planning, I think that speaks volumes of how difficult it is to just like figure out what's what within the Google ecosystem. There are so many options and obviously a bunch of other ones that we haven't mentioned in this context because they just don't fit within you know the, the topic that we're discussing. But you might be put off from actually exploring a lot of these because there are so many options. After having tried Cozy for a few weeks, we decided we're gonna stick with Google. Mostly because the overview that the calendar offers us, but also because of the integration that it has with our Google Home. Yeah. It'd be hard to give up on that shopping list. Uh huh. That said, we can still recommend Cozy and both applications are really good if you're looking for a digital family calendar. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave us a comment. Also, if you have any questions about the two family calendars, then ask those and we'll do our best to answer them. And then we'll see you next week. Bye.